Hey guys, welcome back again to Ken Tamplin Vocal Academy, where the proof is in the singing. I get the luxury of taking these incredible isolated vocal stems or isolated vocals, solo vocals, uh, of some of the most epic, legendary rock and pop pieces of all time. And next up is Rob Halford, Judas Priest, and Painkiller. Now, I did a version of this myself. I'll put that in the description so you can see how I did. Um, and then I think I did something with Katie, one of my students, and I had another um, Judas Priest tune. So I'll put that all in the description. You can see how we did. Uh, but uh, Rob is a force to be reckoned with. I'll tell you, I've seen him a couple of times and wow, he just blew the roof off. So uh, with that said, I want to get started. But uh, first, if you wouldn't please mind liking and subscribing to my channel, that'd be really cool. Uh, I have a singing course. The course is called How to Sing Better Than Anyone Else. You heard it right. How to Sing Better Than Anyone Else. I walk you through all kinds of different styles, rock, pop, R&B, and everything in between. Uh, and you can find it right here at KenTamplinVocalAcademy.com. Uh, I also have a really cool free singing forum over there where you go there, you can join up for free, and you can talk to over 20,000 different members in the forums and negotiate all this greatness in singing in hopes to help make you great at singing, okay? With that said, I just wanna dive right in. Rob Halford, painkiller Judas Priest. Here we go. Now, if you heard right out of the gate, there's all kinds of effects coming in and out. This is a very common trick so that, we, and a lot of people, you know, they think that it's kind of set and forget. You add your effects, you leave it alone, and then through the whole song, that's kind of what it is. That's not how recording is done at all. In fact, oftentimes, they'll just put reverb at the very end of a word or delay at the very end of a word, or they'll gate a reverb off really heavy. Now, we've talked a lot about this in some of these vocal stems, so if you get a chance and you're interested in the recording, process in addition to me doing a vocal analysis and a vocal tutorial to teach you how to sing and how to do this, what he's doing and how to replicate it. Um, I also talk about the recording process. So I want to play this again and I want you to hear how the reverbs are coming in and out and in and out. One minute his, his voice is real tight and small, the next minute it's just soaking and drenched in effects. Okay, check it out again. Listen, look, listen closely. Now, most of the time, I heard only the big effect come on the word bullet, okay? Now, I don't know if this is all the effect that they had on the record, and in fact, in some of the cases of these vocal stems we're doing, um, you know, you can't really tell if that's really all the effect they use, because on the record, it sounds like quite a bit more than what's here. So this might be a drier vocal version that's what's really on there, though I know I have auditioned this particular stem, though sometimes I don't, uh, and I do know more reverb is coming, <laughs> so as a fair warning, but I wanna talk about um, the vocal itself now for you guys out there. Now, Rob predominantly uses head voice. Though, um, you know, in songs like You've Got Another Thing Coming, he does use some chest voice. I'm not saying he doesn't use chest voice, but most of the time he screams and uses like a reinforced falsetto head voice. So, faster than a bullet, terrifying scream, enraged and down anger, he's a man and a machine. Right. So everything is, is in his head voice. So what we want to do, and some of you say, well, I can't do that. I don't have a good falsetto, or my falsetto is really hooty and fluty. Um, so I, there's no way I could ever see myself doing Rob Halford. That's just not true. In my younger years, I had almost no falsetto at all. True story. I had to develop the falsetto. And how we do it, it was take a really bright tone. Right, and we do this over and over and over again, where we grow it like a muscle, because that's what it is. It's a it's a muscle. We're growing a group of muscles, and we want to um, get our chords to close in our head voice register uh, to be able to match this really bright ping. Now, some people refer to twang uh, as this bright ping, where they go up in their upper register, and it's an E H sound. Now, the reason they use the E H sound is it's the easiest sound because it's the smallest vowel to get a pointed brassy. A, a pointed sound, a really piercing kind of sound. So, ah, ah, ah. so you could just do the melody. Don't even do the singing part. Go. Ah, 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 ah. 
right? You do that over and over and over again, and you'll notice that your voice will start to get this bright ping, okay? Now, I want to give you some caveats to things. First of all, don't overdo it. Okay, that's the first thing, don't overdo it. Second, um, this is not gonna help your chest voice, your belting, powerful chest voice. In fact, it can atrophy that a little bit, especially initially when you're first learning how to do this. Now, I cover all of this in my singing course. So if you have any questions about all this stuff, I have some free tutorials on YouTube, definitely check that out. But I also cover all of these different little ways of growing your voice, okay? And now it's important too to not just do EH, the at sound, because you need to get through all of your vowels so you can sing words. It's just a, a jumping point or a springboard to get you familiar with how this is supposed to feel. Now, some people will feel a tickle in their lower esophagus when they do this. That's fairly normal. If the tickle stays there, just stop for a while. Come back. Don't try to hit it too hard. Yeah! Do it real light, real gentle, so where you don't feel that kind of pinching tickle sort of feeling in the throat, in the base of the throat, right here in the, in the uh, esophagus where it goes down into the lung and the, and the, you know, the throat. So anyway, that's really important. But as you build this muscle structure, you can see yourself getting to some of these places Rob got to. Let's continue. Closing in with vengeance, soaring high. Now on the word high. high, 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 high. Right, you can really hear a lot of the effect come in, right? Let's continue. Now, when you go to listen to this song in the recording and you hear, now you're hearing all that reverb. Let's go back and listen to this, this chorus again. You're gonna go, wow, I had no idea there was that much effect on the voice, right? Now, I wanna, I wanna demo, do a demonstration because I'll put some effect on there so you can hear it with me do it. But I'd like to back this up a little bit. So let's go to, is to the top of the Okay, now I want to show you something. Okay, I hate to turn my back to you guys, but hang in there for a second. Let me let me add some some effect to this. I'm gonna add some delay and a few reverbs. Okay, and I want you. This is the painkiller. Pain. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. Here it is without effect. This is the painkiller. Pain. Right? Now, isn't that a remarkable difference? And, and again, so there's this illusion that he's just screaming bloody murder at you and he's spitting out blood with this. And sometimes he gets pretty gnarly on the sound, but it's that effect that really accentuates all this stuff. Let me make sure all the effects off. Hold on here. Uh, sorry, one, two, three, four. Yeah, there we go. Um, sorry, I want to make sure that all the effect was turned off. But can you tell now how you can take kind of a, this is the Right. And you've got this, you know, reinforced falsetto that just makes me sound like a roaring lion when I add a bunch of effect. And a lot of times he uses doubler or he'll double, double or triple track his vocal tracks and stuff. So let's go back and take a listen to this now again in light of this. So you hear all that effect, you know, this is right? It's really not as gnarly as you think it is, though Rob is gnarly. I'm not going to say he's not gnarly, but it's not as gnarly as we remember in the recording and when we're hearing it all by itself and all the production and the magic and the voodoo that goes along with it. Okay, let's continue. Planets devastated, mankind's on its knees, a savior comes from out the skies and answer to their pleas. Now, did you hear, if you listen to that part where there's not that much effect on the voice, right? Some doubler and some other stuff and a little bit of reverb, it doesn't sound that big. Still really cool, right? But it just doesn't sound that big. Now, for, for most singers, it's once you've developed this, you know, um, singing and falsetto kind of thing, it's a lot easier 
to sing in falsetto like it like this than like Steelheart singing She's Gone or Coverdale singing, you know, the Here I Go Again or some White Howard White singing or Dio or or Iron Maiden actually is kind of interesting too because he does use a lot of mixed head voice and then back into chest. But um, actually Bruce pulls a lot of chest up into the sound and it, some of the Maiden stuff is to, for me harder to sing than the Priest stuff because the Priest stuff is a lot in head voice like this. So I want to be clear on that too. So again, I'm not minimizing Rob's stuff, but I want to point out that it's easier to sing this stuff in head voice like this than, than understanding how to sing a big chest resonant sound. Now, I think it's interesting whoever did this track left the guitar in, right? I want to point something out. I want you to know just the guitar, not even the drums, you know, double bass drum stuff and the bass coming in. I want you to notice how much energy the the the, the track gets when the guitar comes in and makes you feel like the, that the vocal has more energy than it really does. Take a listen to this really closely. Listen. It's Right? Evil's going under deadly so all of a sudden the energy just goes up just from adding just the one guitar track. Forget about the drums and bass, right? So again, as we go back and listen to this stuff, I, I'm not trying to, to you know, uh, uh, make anyone think it or like I said, minimize what's really going on in the track. I just want to point out that it's the combination, all these things working in concert with each other that gives us this, this sensation of this massive, crazy, roaring, lion-ishy kind of thing coming at us, okay? A lot of effect. Now, if I just did that, you'd probably just laugh at me and I could add a little more power and a little more strength to that, but I could do that scream and you can hear it in my track. Now, the reason I bring this all up is when I did my version of Painkiller, I actually did most of it in chest voice. Let me say this again. When you audition my version of Painkiller in the description, I want you to listen. I didn't sing it like Rob. I manned up to it and I belted in a chest resonant sound. So I, I, I literally just from the bowels of my chest, <laughs> I drug all that chest resonant sound and sang this whole song predominantly in chest voice rather than defaulting to head voice. Now, a lot of people said, it doesn't sound like Rob. I was doing it to kind of make a point of how tough this tune would be if you were to sing it in chest voice rather than just singing the whole song in falsetto. So fast and Terrifying scream, enraged and full of anger, is a man and a machine. Right? If I just sing it that way, now let's let's add the effect again. Okay, hold on, hold on. Here we go. Gonna add the effect. Here we go. Now, did you see the difference? The difference is shouting in falsetto or screaming in falsetto and all that effect made me sound pretty huge. Now, if I put that in the track, you know, you'd go, wow, that's pretty gnarly. So now with a view towards that, go listen to my version where I, you know, vast up in, you know, and I'm pulling a chest all the way up into that sound, which is pretty stinking hard to do, okay? So I just wanted to kind of differentiate that and separate that out so you guys know where I'm coming from and you can actually see a physical demonstration, just boom, right here now, how quickly I did it, a live microphone. I didn't, you know, there's not a lot of tricks here. We're just talking here, having a fireside chat about, <laughs> fireside chat about painkiller. Okay, kind of interesting. Here we go, let's continue. See, I'm not sure because this might uh, be a lot of uh, yeah, the solo section. Here we go. Faster than a laser bullet, louder than an atom bomb. 
Now, if you listen to that, the top vocal is doubled and the bottom harmony is doubled and it makes for a really cool sound and, and the harmony is really kind of dissonant. It's not like a major third or anything. It's a really unusual harmony. So he, kudos to them for you know being a trendsetter in that way rather than just following all the major key stuff or just following a, a, you know, a root and a third, a root and a fourth. You know, they have some really creative stuff here. So I want to back this up. Here we go. Check it out. You know, he's, he's in a lower register, almost an octave away, right? Which really betrusses or holds up and makes this section sound really powerful. It's really cool. Cool. Now, another interesting thing I want to bring up is um, a lot of people have a lot of different songs they like about Priest that they think makes, you know, the ultimate heavy Priest tune. But I like the fact that Rob Al Hufford has just come out recently, I think it was in Blabbermouth, and he said, you know, that they're going to have a new Priest album coming out that's going to be really heavy and really, you know, uh, gnarly, um, really metallic and heavy. And then he referred it and said a lot like Painkiller. So even Rob esteems this maybe as one of his gnarliest works or you know most guttural works um, when he refers saying the new album's gonna go back and be like this guttural painkiller kind of thing. So I wanted to point that out too because I feel the same way when I hear the song, but other people, you know, have their favorites and that's fine. But I just wanted to point that out, okay? So let's continue. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> maybe that's it. Here we go. Okay, this is the solo, so let's get past this. Hold on. I should know where all these cues are, but... I'm gonna get to the end. Hold on. Here we go. I love how, too, sometimes you can hear his, his British accent come through. You know, they've been brought back from the grave. <laughs> I think Shakespeare has kind of stepped into this here for a minute to, 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 to sing priest. Flying high on rapture, stronger, free, and brave. Never more recaptured, they've been brought back from the grave. With mankind resurrected, forever to survive. Returns from Armageddon to the sky. Now, again, on this whole section, what was interesting about it, if you want to go back and listen to it, it's pretty much just a single vocal with a little bit of effect. That's kind of pretty much how he sounds all the time. It's just adding all this extra cheese and, you know, and, and icing on the cake stuff uh, that gives it all this massive craziness, all right? So here comes the chorus again. <laughs> All that effect. Now you can hear the doubler on the vocal when the when the chorus comes in. You can hear at least two voices going on because you can hear that the heart. It's not exactly in unison, right? I love that scream. Now, one of the hardest things for me to do in this tune, uh, there's more coming, but one of the hardest things was that end note, right? I don't know if you, I'm sure you guys remember the end note. Let me find it. Hold on. Here we go. It's uh, coming up. Here. Is he is the painkiller. This is the painkiller. Now, that's the chess voice version of Rob that we've come to know and love as well. Let's. So here's the chess voice version. This is the painkiller. Raise it on his chest voice. Is the painkiller. This is and it's, the And it's multi-tracked, meaning it's, you know, there's it's at least two or three voices, right? That are all double tracked, triple track, with a lot of effect on it. Listen.
lot of effect. Right, and he gets into that note and he builds a lot of tension into the sound and then comes the epic ending. Let's check it out here, so. Let's find it. Okay, I'm gonna go to the top of this, here we go. Here it is. Can't stop the Cool. Now, listen to my version. When I hold that note, I hold it a lot heavier than he does. I want you to go back and listen to how light he's actually holding the note. Ah, he's like barely holding it. And I go, yeah! And like I'm really leaning into my version where he doesn't do that. Listen to it really closely. Because again, our perception of what we think was big back then isn't quite as big as it really is when you break it down and hear the naked vocal. Check it out. See? Cool. So you guys, you know, uh, hopefully you like what you heard and uh, we have a lot more of these coming your way and definitely check out my next video.